Hello viewers, welcome to Uvol, the channel for database and data professionals. In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate how to create a Windows 10 Enterprise Edition virtual machine. So viewers, I probably don't have to tell you how useful a Windows PC can be in many situations when you want to install a piece of software or a game or test something that needs a Microsoft Windows platform but your laptop or desktop is in a different or unsupported platform for your purpose like an Apple Mac or Linux. So in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to install Windows 10 Enterprise Edition 64-bit on a virtual machine. For this demo, I am using the Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine software to create virtual machines which is free and supported in any of the mostly used desktop platforms like Windows, Mac or Linux or even Solaris. The download link for Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine software is given in the description and I also have a full series of tutorials on Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines starting from how to install it, create and manage virtual machines etc. If you want, you can watch the full series and create your own virtual IT lab to learn database, Unix, Linux, networking etc or any area in the IT world where you want to be an expert. Now let's start with creating a Windows 10 Enterprise Edition virtual machine. First let's search for download Windows 10 Enterprise Edition. In the result we'll select this first one. Please select your Windows 10 Enterprise download. We'll right click and open it in a new tab. And in the list of downloads under the English United States section I will Select this 64-bit under the ISO Enterprise Downloads. Let's click it and the download will start. And the download size is around 5.2 gigs, which is going to take a couple of minutes based on your internet speed. Since I have already downloaded this ISO image, so I am going to stop this. Please make a note of this download location because we are going to use this ISO image for the installation. Next, to create the virtual machine, I will go to my VirtualBox virtual machine console which is installed on my 64-bit Windows 10 Enterprise Edition host with two Intel Xeon processors and 200 GB of physical memory. I already have a lot of virtual machines which are put in different groups there and if I click on any of the group header, the top menu changes to file group snapshot and help and if I select any of the individual machines inside any of the groups the top menu changes to file machine snapshot and help but don't worry if you don't have the groups there simply you will not be able to see a group menu there instead this machine menu will be there and we'll simply first click on the machine menu and under that select this new item and in this dialog box first we'll select the name of the virtual machine that we are going to create so we'll simply put win 10 EE say that's for enterprise edition. The folder will be selected by default which is specified for creating the virtual disks. So make sure that you select a location which is having a lot of space at least 50 gigs available. Then ISO image we are not going to select at this time. Then the type Microsoft Windows and the version will be Windows 10 64 bit. With this information, we'll simply click on the finish button to create the basic structure of the virtual machine. As we can see that the new virtual machine named Win10EE is created under the admin group because we were selecting this group while creating the virtual machine. And if we want to move it to a different group, we can simply drag and drop this. Say, I want to put it under the Windows group, so I'll simply drag it and put it on the Windows group. And now we can see that the Windows 10 EE, this particular VM is under the Windows group. Now click on the virtual machine, then click on this settings button to specify the other settings and the properties of this virtual machine. So the name as we have already specified, Win 10 EE, the type is Microsoft Windows version Windows 10 64 bit. Now leave all these other things under the advanced description and disk encryption section as default then we will go to the systems section and under the system section the base memory which is selected by default is 2 gigs 
and if you have more space there you can allocate more but 2 gigs is enough to start your virtual machine as i have a lot of memory available in the host machine so i am going to allocate 4 gigs memory to this virtual machine so 4096 mb is 4 gigs then the boot order i will uncheck this floppy option because this is no more used and then i am keeping only the optical and hard disk option there then the chipset tpm pointing devices and extended features for all of this i am keeping just the default settings then go to the processor section and under that it is selecting one processor by default which is actually enough for the virtual machine to start as you can see i have 32 cpus available in my host machine so i am going to allocate two cpus accordingly you can also choose two or more cpus if you have a lot of cpus available in your host machine then the execution cap i am keeping 100 percent as default then all the other settings like extended features i am keeping with default values then under the acceleration section i am not making any changes there then go to the display section under display the video memory selected is 128 mb by default which is enough for this virtual machine then the monitor count one as default and i'm not making any changes to the scale factor which is taken as 100 percent by default then pay attention to this graphics controller which is taken as vbox svga by default and if your virtual machine is not starting or if you are not able to get a proper graphical user interface you may have to change it to the other available options like vbox vga or vms vga for now i am keeping it vbox as vga which works great for my configuration then the extended features i am not enabling any 3d acceleration here then i am not making any changes under the remote display and recordings section then go to the storage section and here we can see one SETA controller is already allocated and under that we have one hard disk which is actually created with a name win10ee.vdi so it takes the name of the virtual machine itself and .vdi as the extension and as you can see it is created under the d colon virtual machines folder and the location of this virtual disk file is shown in the tooltip and the storage allocated by default is 50 gigs the actual size is 2 mb it means the file has not grown up to 50 gigs which is the maximum size of the file and initially it is having only 2 mb and this file will grow as we install windows and other softwares on the virtual machine in the details section we see its dynamically allocated storage file will grow as we keep on installing new components and the location is also specified here and the attached to is nothing but to which virtual machine it is attached to and the encryption with key is blank because we are not enabling encryption for this virtual machine then we will select this second thing that is the optical disk which is empty currently and we have to now attach our iso image to this particular optical disk to do that click on this optical disk icon and in the menu select the choose a disk file item and from there we'll go to the location where we have kept our windows 10 enterprise edition iso that we downloaded from microsoft so i'm keeping it under the windows directory and under that windows 10 enterprise and this is the file we downloaded as the iso image of windows 10 select that file and click on the open button now the next thing is the audio section where we are not going to make any changes then network this is important you see we have enabled only one adapter or the network adapter for this virtual machine which is enough and then under this attached to it is net by default which is selected and we have to change it to bridged adapter make sure that you select only bridged adapter and then the name of the adapter will be selected by default based on what network interface card you have in your host machine then under the advanced section we are not going to make any change and then we will press the ok button so our virtual machine is ready to be started all the settings have been made appropriately now when it is selected we are going to press the start button and as you can see in the right top corner the virtual machine is powering up it will take a few seconds to bring up the initial screen of the virtual machine and as we see it's coming up and first it is going to boot from the cd as per the boot order 
we have selected let's put it in the middle and it is booting from the iso image of the cd or the dvd that we attached to the optical drive and we get the initial screen of the setup where it is asking to select the language to install and english united states is the default which we are okay with then the time and currency format again english united states is okay for us then keyboard or input method is also us then press the next button and then in this screen we are simply going to press the install now button next it is asking for accepting the license terms i will check this box and press the next button and in this screen it's asking whether to upgrade which includes installation of windows and key file settings and applications and under the second option we see customs install windows only because we don't have anything installed in this virtual machine it's literally a blank virtual machine so for us the second option we are going to select that is custom install windows only and it is also going to give us some advanced option to customize so click on that and then it is selecting the only drive that we have and we allocated 50 gigs to that particular drive and we will press the next button and the setup has started copying the windows files and all these steps we'll be able to see as we progress and it's going to take 5 to 10 minutes i will fast forward the video during the steps which take time and i will resume when there is something worth mentioning or i am making any changes 77 percent of the activity has been completed so far now the setup is installing the features installing the updates and now windows is going to reboot the system i'll simply click on the restart now button please note that it may restart one or more times in between before getting this just a moment message the installation is complete and now we need to select the basic settings like the country region language etc so the united states is selected by default as the region and i'll press the yes button then the keyboard layout which is also selected by default as us and i will press the yes button then want to add a second keyboard layout i'm just going to skip this and then the setup is doing some network configuration and it's asking us not to turn off the system and we are almost there and we arrived at the sign in screen for microsoft windows at this stage you actually don't have to sign in and instead i will select this domain join instead option below and then we have to enter a name for the first time who this pc will belong to so i'll simply put a local user as say win 10 admin you can put your name there if you want and i will click the next button and then we need to specify a password i'm going to set a password as welcome one two three four five because windows requires certain complexity of the password if you do not meet that complexity it is not going to accept that password so click the next button and to confirm the password again i'll put welcome one two three four five then it is asking us to set some security questions you can set the security questions as you prefer i'm just going to set it as say what was your first patch name i'll simply put aaa and press enter for the second question and what is the name of the city where you were born I will simply select BBB, press enter. And as the third question, what was your childhood nickname? I will put CCC. So this will be easier for me to remember. Again, you should put security questions which are relevant for you. And then I will press the next button. Then under the choose privacy settings for your device, I will keep everything as default. If you want, you can make any changes there and then i will press the accept button and i am not going to enable cortana that is your personal assistant from windows and i will simply press the 
not now button this is going to take a few more minutes and there we go we have got the initial screen of our windows operating system installed on the virtual machine let's close all these windows and here we can see that we are getting the interface of our virtual machine in a much smaller window and even if we maximize the size of the parent window we are still getting a resized version of the guest windows machine to fix this issue actually we have to install something called virtualbox guest edition which will give us a better graphical user interface of the virtual machine and also that will give us host and guest integration in a much efficient way and it will give us some more enhanced features and to do that we will click on the devices menu here and then we will select this insert guest editions cd image once we select that we should be able to see the cd image of the virtualbox guest edition software is attached to our cd drive to access that i will start the windows explorer and from there i will go to the cd drive and it will give us the list of all the files available and from the list of files i am going to select the vbox windows editions so double click on that and it will ask for a confirmation to run the software and we will press the yes button click next let it select the default location and press the next button and then install button it will be quick maybe less than a minute i will pause the video and i'll come back once the installation is completed for the guest edition as you can see the guest edition installation is complete and it's asking to reboot the virtual machine so the reboot now option is selected and i will press the finish button let it reboot first then we have to make a few more changes before getting the full screen for the virtual machine and the reboot completed we need to log in to do that i will right click on the button at the bottom right corner of the virtual machine with the down arrow image on it as this button gives us the options to send keystrokes or key combinations to the virtual machine so i'll right click and select the insert control alter delete option which will give us the login screen and i will put the password as welcome one two three four five for the windows 10 admin user that we created and we just logged in now i'm going to right click on the desktop of the virtual machine then go to display settings and then under the display settings i will select a resolution which is higher than the current one say 1280 by 960 and then i will press the keep changes button close this display settings window let's resize the window and then maximize it again and this time we are able to see the full screen of the virtual machine it is still in a window but you are able to see it is as a full screen window but if you want to get rid of this window and to see it as a full screen in the monitor then all you need to do is to go to the view menu and then you need to select full screen mode make a note of the toggle button that is host button and the f for your virtual box installation you should have a host button in my case that is the windows button itself i'll be able to come back to the windows screen from the full screen so first let's select this full screen mode and as we can see it is the full screen in the monitor and if we want to come back you can use the host key and the f button combination that is windows f and it brought back the full screen window so now our virtual machine with windows 10 enterprise edition is ready this is actually the evaluation version but even if it's an evaluation version of windows you are going to get almost everything you need in your windows pc you can play around starting from installation of games software and anything you want to learn with windows you can do it with this evaluation version of the windows so viewers please provide your feedback in the comment section of the video and hit the like button if you found it useful that will mean a lot to me and help grow this channel